What's up, YouTube? So we're going to do a quick video of um, adjusting the parking brake on my uh, 2002 GMC Sierra. So um, let's walk out there and I'll show you why I'm doing that. Uh, it's a real quick, easy procedure, so let's go. Okay. So this is inside my truck real quick, but you can see when I press on the parking brake, I mean, that baby goes all the way to the floor pretty easy. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to address today. You saw I just pressed that uh, parking brake lever all the way to the ground. So what it does, um, it'll actually hold the truck. If I put it in gear and let off the brake with the parking brake on, it'll actually hold the truck. But if I barely tap the accelerator at all, it won't hold it. Um, and I bet if I was parked on a steep hill or something um, and put it in gear or something, it would just roll back. So I'm going to adjust it. It has new new brake shoes on there already for the parking brake. And uh, they just haven't been adjusted correctly where it'll hold it like it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because i got an inspection coming up here soon. And they'll want to be able to hit the accelerator a little bit and, and have it hold the uh, truck in place. I already gave you a brief description of what I'm doing. I'm going to use the same first opening sequence is for probably two videos but uh, you can use this first method uh, the first half of this video to uh, change just your regular brake pads if you want or there's a couple extra steps if you want to change your um, parking brake or adjust it or change the pads on that as well you'll just continue on with the video but the first half of this will apply for both um, I've already taken the cover off and broken these lug nuts with the tire on the ground so now I'm going to raise the tire up just a little bit um, remove the lug nuts the rest of the way, and then we'll actually dive into the real work. So first part of this, just get your tire off so we have access to the rotor and brakes and all that behind it. So uh, here we go. All right, so tire's barely off the ground, maybe a quarter of an inch or something, half an inch, whatever you're comfortable with. No need to get crazy. Lug nuts are off, and then we'll just pull the tire off and set him over to the side. No need in breaking your back. I'm still pretty young, but I'd rather work smart than work hard, you know what I'm saying? So as you can see, I have the truck. I'm actually using just uh, this floor jack, um, and I have it on the rear axle here. But since I'm going to be working around in here and cranking on some bolts and stuff, I'm also going to double that up with a jack stand underneath the axle as well. Um, so I have the jack stand placed under the axle. I'm actually going to lower the truck down a little bit so that some of the weight is actually sitting on the, the jack stand. And I'll leave, the, uh, I'll leave some pressure on the, uh, the jack itself as well. So it'll be kind of like a redundant two, two phases of lifting. So lower that down just a little. So I got some weight on the jack stand. I also have some weight on the jack. That's how I prefer to do it since I'm going to be up under here. Um, just taking a little extra precaution. So now let's get into actually removing the uh, the caliper, the caliper uh, bracket, and then we'll remove the rotor to get to the brake pads and all that good stuff. So first things first, we got our tire off. Now we're going to work to. Uh, remove this caliper and if you're just changing the brake pads this will be all you have left to do is to pull this caliper off and then you'll have access to the brake pads to do that there's two bolts let me see if you can see this it's 12 millimeter nut or a bolt I mean so 12 millimeter there there's one up on the top and there's one on the bottom right there where my finger is um, so you'll need a, a socket wrench 12 millimeter on that and also where the bracket goes through, the bolt feeds through there, and the nut is actually free spinning as well. And it has two, most of it's round, but there'll be two flat spots on each side. And you can get a, you'll have to find exactly where it is, but you can get a 5 8 inch wrench on there 
to hold it in place as well while you break that loose. So that's really all there is to it. Two bolts. You'll need a like a 5 8 inch wrench and a 12 millimeter ratchet and socket. Ratty tatty lefty loosey. And they shouldn't be on there. I mean they can only get on there so tight. I didn't look at what the torque spec was. So I can't, don't quote me on it. We can look that up in the book if you want, but uh, or comment in the comment sections. And what I like to do, so once you break that, it should spin out freely, but I'm going to leave the bolt actually in there while I break the bottom one. Otherwise, this assembly will try to rotate. So now I'm going to do the bottom side. Let's see if I can get that in the shot. So there we go, 5 8 wrenches on there. Get my 12 millimeter socket. Ah, and there we go. See, he breaks free real easy. Then you can just spin him out with your finger. You can see a real short bolt. And then I'll also pop the top one off and you can set that to the side. All right, so now we got those two bolts off of there. And actually all that's left to do, the caliper will just slide right out. Ta-da! And it has a uh, the short, pretty short hydraulic hose on it. So what you can actually do, just um, set him up on your leaf spring right here. If you're going to be doing a whole bunch of work, you could secure this guy in place with a strap or something, but he should set there relatively easily. Um, now let me get the camera in a little closer. So if you're just doing your brake pads for your truck, there'll be one on each side now. Now that the caliber's off, these will just slide out to the side. And you can see they have two little nipples, one on each end. Can you see those? Yeah, two little nipples. And there'll be two little grooves on this caliper bracket that those would have fed into. Um, so those just slide out. Mine are actually relatively new. You can see I have quite a bit of brake pad left. Um, then the rear one will slide out just the same. Um, so there you go, brake pads. Um, so if you're just changing your brake pads, that's all you got to do is pull the wheel off and two bolts to get the caliper off. Um, and then the brake pads will slide back in there. So I'm going to shoot one extra little portion. Um, once you put your new pads in, there's one more step you need to do on your caliper. So I'll show you that real quick as well. Right, moving forward, trying to get to our uh, our parking brake pads. So now that we got the caliper off and we've pulled the brake pads out, now we need to work on removing this bracket here. And to do so, if you look around to the back, let me see if I can get the camera in here. Um, oh yeah, there you are. So this is where the, the caliper bolt was. Just directly behind that, you see this big guy here? There's also one down. You see him right down there, but so there's two 18 millimeter. They're pretty bad boy bolts. Um, we'll need to pop those two bolts out. And that's all that's holding this caliper bracket in place. Um, and depending on if you've ever done this or not, they, the bolts have an anti-seize on them, or they should at least from the factory, but they may be on there pretty tough. Sometimes I'm using like this 18-inch breaker bar. It just depends how manly you want to be, but you may have to put a little bit on those to break those free. But once you do, it's just... <sighs> and see, since we're in here cranking around pretty tough, that's why I like to have that jack stand as well, just to be secure. So the top one broke free pretty quick. Now let's go to the bottom one. There we go. So now they're broken loose. Oh, I dropped something. Depending on how tight they are on there, you may be able to, if you wiggle the bracket a little bit, you may be able to just unscrew them with your hand. But there's one, you can see some of the yellow and I see it's still on there. Get the bottom one. Um, so I had switched over to a regular socket to back them out of there a little bit. And there's the other one. Alright, so now that those two bolts are out of there, this bracket will just slide right out. Um, and there's also two little uh, metal receiving areas for the uh, 
the brake pads. Sometimes those may fall out if if they do, just slide them back into place. But keep a hold of those, and we can set him to the side. All right. Now that the caliper and the bracket are off, um, all that's really left to do is slide the rotor off. Now let me. I got a rotor off, so I switched the camera around here a little bit so I can get in here and maybe show you some of this a little bit better. But uh, you can see this here, little cylinder, and then there's this horseshoe that works its way around. So that's actually the parking brake. Um, and there's two little groove locations where it slides in there on that that uh, cylinder. And there's also, so if you're replacing this down on the bottom, you see that little bolt right there and that little bracket. That actually also holds this um, parking brake into place. So if you're trying to remove this guy, you'll want to take this bolt out and that bracket will pop right off. You'll be able to get him out. Um, and then the way that this works, I don't know, can you tell? Yeah, you can tell this little, almost looks like a, a, the head of a bolt, but it has a, an indention in it as well as this one. And this whole horseshoe will actually slide up. And that's how you put it back in there, is slide it down into those grooves. You'll have to get them lined up. Um, and if you're doing that, so you'll slide this guy up after you take that bottom bolt out. Slide this guy up, and he'll actually, you kind of tilt him sideways, and he'll pop, he'll come over the outside of this uh, hub pretty easily. So if you're changing your brake pad or your parking brake pad at the same time, you'll need to do that step. For me, I recently had mine changed. Um, I just didn't fully adjust them. Um, so what you're going to do here, you can see there's two pieces on this side actually, and then there's this rotating assembly with teeth on it. So I can actually spin this and it'll back this bolt out. This little bolt here is threaded. So as I rotate this, this bolt can adjust forward or backward. So it'll actually change the uh, change the diameter of this horseshoe and that's how we adjust it. So right now it's still a little bit loose so I'm going to go ahead and adjust this guy um, and make him a little bit tighter. So now I'm going to move forward with the adjustment. Um, I'm putting the camera at this angle just so you can see. This is what I'll be turning to adjust but you can see how small this gap is right here. And as I adjust him you should be able to see that uh, get a little bit bigger or wider. So let me zoom the camera out. And to do that, I'm just actually using a pair of pliers to adjust it. So say you were changing your uh, your whole brake, your whole uh, parking brake pad, then you have him back in here. You would still want to do this adjustment as well. Um, and think about it just like a uh, a screw. If this screw, if you wanted to back him out, you would do a, a lefty loosey which means the, this guy with teeth on him would actually be turning clockwise. So clockwise will actually make this guy back out or tighten your parking brake pad. So I'm, I'm adjusting him a little bit and you can already see that gap has got a little bit wider. Um, so that's the procedure to know when you're good to go it's actually just a, a trial and error. So say you adjust him a little bit, then you'll take your you'll take your rotor and you'll see how much resistance there is because the brake pad makes contact or that pad makes contact with the inside of this rotor. And right now it's still pretty loose. You want you want there to be pretty good little amount of resistance as you go to slide him on because then once you press them all the way forward, it'll kind of have a little more room to wiggle in there. So once it's all the way on, it's actually a little bit looser than it was as you were sliding it on. But right now, there's still very minimal resistance, so I'm going to adjust him some more. So let's back him out just a little bit more.
pull the camera over here. You can see that gap. It's gotten a little bit wider. Let's try our rotor again. So this time, there's definitely some resistance. And there's actually too much. I can't get them all the way on there, so that time I went too much. So now let's back him off a little bit. About half as much as I did a while ago. Right around there somewhere. Okay. So I backed off a little bit because I'd gone too far. There was too much resistance. So let's try this one. So that one feels pretty good. So there was quite a bit of resistance, and then once you get past that initial resistance, he slides right on. And you can tell that there's a little bit of resistance there. So I would say I'm pretty happy with that. So once you just, that's what I'm just trial and error, just keep adjusting, adjusting until it feels good. Um, then it should be good to go. Okay. So we got the parking brake, or the, uh, yeah, the parking brake, we got it adjusted or replaced. If you were replacing the pad, then you still do the same adjustment procedure and then you just keep adjusting it until there's barely, you'll feel it, quite a bit of friction. Um, but not overly. You want it to be able to slide on and off pretty easily. And you can also judge it by the pedal, which I'll show you afterwards, like I showed you at the beginning. Mine went all the way to the floor real easy. Once you have them adjusted properly, you'll know, you know, you'll feel some pretty good resistance as you, you know, get a quarter or halfway in. Um, you don't want it to just be bottoming out to the floor um, when you go to put your parking brake on. But now that uh, we got that done, now the assembly is just the, the reverse of how we, we took this guy apart. We'll start by uh, slapping the bracket back on. Again, two bolts that hold that guy in place. And again, if you want to, you can slap some anti-seize on those. Mine still had a little bit on from before, so I think they should be good to go. And most brake pads, if you buy them and you're doing this yourself, they normally have a lifetime warranty, so... Um, once you know how to do it, you can just keep swapping them in for uh, the free replacements every time they start to get worn. So those two bolts are hand tightened up. Then I'm going to use my breaker bar to tighten them up pretty good. Since all these bolts are holding on our, our braking system, kind of our lifeline of stopping, I want to make sure that they're good and tight. Okay, so now if you're just in the reassemble process or if you did get new brake pads, um, again, they'll be curved with the same uh, circumference, you know, curve of your rotor. And they have, again, those two little nipples that'll fit into these grooves. So you kind of want to get the bottom one just barely started. You don't want it to put it all the way in or this top one won't go in correctly. Just get it barely started, and then uh, the top nipple should fit right in there as well. Do the same thing on the rear side. Alright, so we, we got our brake pad slid in, so there's one extra step. Especially if you're putting new brake pads in, your other ones were probably significantly worn down, and now you have these new pads with this huge, big diameter on here. Um, or I guess, you know, extra width compared to a worn pad. So sometimes, if your pads are very worn, now we're back on our caliper. Your piston on your caliper here, if your pads are worn, it may be extended all the way out here because that's where it needed to be in order for you to get good brake pressure. Um, so you'll have to, to back that guy back in in order to 
get him to fit over your new pad width. Um, to do that, you can just use a simple C clamp, um, and you can set him on here. And the, this actual the screw will feed down into this hole here. So let me get him down in there. And my caliper is already pretty much all the way backed out, so you or my piston. I mean, you won't be able to see much. But um, let's see if you can see it. So I don't know what is that? Maybe a half a centimeter. But well, you can see as I'm cranking on him, well, he barely went any because he's already almost all the way to the edge. But if your, if your caliper, if your piston was way up here, as you screw this in, he'll back down. Just go nice and slow because it will be pushing brake fluid back into your master cylinder, back through your system. So just go nice and slow. And then when you take the, uh, the C-clamp bolt back out, I'm turning that. I don't know if y'all can see it, but you get the idea. Just use a simple C-clamp. So now that you've adjusted that, it should be wide enough that you can slide him over your new brake pads and he'll have room to, to actually fit on there. Pretty simple. All right, then again, remember there's a, a bolt at the top and bottom, so get those holes lined up and you should be able to feed the, the bolts back through there. I like to put both on before I start cranking one or the other. Get them lined up, get them in there, hand tight. All right. So now, back to our 12 millimeter and our 5 8 inch socket. And sometimes if you can't, there we go. So 5 8 inch wrench, 12 millimeter. Now we'll be tightening these guys down. And those don't need to be overly tight, but still get them pretty tight that you'll feel comfortable because they are holding your brake pads. Now do the bottom side. Try to get my ugly mug out of the screenshot. There we go. All right. Top and bottom tightened. Um, now, if you did uh, adjust your the piston on your caliper with the C-clamp, first time you go in and, and press on your brakes, there will be hardly any pressure. And you may even want to bleed them depending on how you feel comfortable. But first time you get in your truck, just make sure you uh, leave it in park, turn your car on, and then pump your brakes a few times to get that, that piston back adjusted where it's contacting the uh, your brake pads properly. Um, so then all that's really left now is to put our tire back on and, and bolt him back up. And I like to get all of these lugs started hand tight. That way I know they're going on the studs correctly and not cross threading. Now, so that's the procedure for adjusting the parking brake. Now, if I come in here, I might have to use my foot this time. So now I get about halfway, and that's about as far as I can go. And it's got some quite a bit of pressure. And like I mentioned in the video, if you adjusted your piston, see, I adjusted mine a little bit, and even then, I was pretty loose on my brakes so pump them a couple times you can also do it when you start it up before you uh, take off just make sure your brakes are, are pumped and, and good to go depending on the severity of uh, pressing in your uh, piston you may have to do a little brake bleeding as well but not normally but just take precaution so right, guys so that's about it quick and easy the other side is just a you know, the opposite of the one that I just showed you. Fuck, got some light. So, thanks for watching. Best of luck. Get her done. Go, go, go. I want to take my bed until I.